More than 20 years after wolves were reintroduced in Idaho, Idaho ranchers have been surprised to experience a host of issues related to wolves killing or stressing livestock that no one expected or had heard about before. Direct predation of livestock was expected to occur, but not at the level seen today. As wolf populations increased statewide, the scale of livestock depredation has steadily increased and it's become a chronic issue in eight Idaho counties. But no one knew, for instance, that range cattle spooked by wolves would attack herding dogs, an essential tool that's been used for more than 100 years to herd livestock. What happens is you'll be on your horse and you'll come into a meadow after cattle that have been tormented every day by wolves. And those cattle will run to your dogs and they, ha they act like they want to kill your dogs. Um, they'll run at them with their feet stomping, similar to like a Mustang. When a Mustang's trying to um, kill somebody, they'll try to stomp it with their front feet and those cattle do the same thing. They come at them with their front feet, they ball at them, they come at them with their head and they literally try to kill your dogs. It, you could have two dogs with you, five dogs, seven dogs. They take them all and they just run in circles and they're just, they just go crazy. The whistle commands are key to working dogs because they can hear you at huge distances. Robin Brown is a professional dog trainer. She runs Broken Circle Border Collies near Council. She has seen firsthand how wolves can change the dynamic between herding dogs and cattle. Ranchers pay good money for trained herding dogs, often more than $5,000 per dog. Once cattle have been spooked by wolves repeatedly, ranchers can't use their dogs to herd cattle, she says. When this happens, really, you, you don't even want a dog up there because they'll just run at your horse and your dog. So the dog, a lot of times we just leave them at the truck. Range riders for the OX Ranch northwest of Council have experienced the same issue. It's all related to livestock getting spooked by wolves during wolf attacks and the stress-related impacts that occur afterwards. The OX Ranch has 20,000 acres of private land and 130,000 acres of public grazing allotments where they raise 1,200 cattle. At least three wolf packs have been living in the same areas as the OX cattle on private and public lands for 10 years. The trouble is when you got a pack of wolves in the area, they, they're continually putting pressure on those cattle. And so the cattle aren't using the range the way they did in the past and to the goals that we have set for ourselves to be good stewards for that resource. They're always feel fearful for their life, that they're under attack, and so their heads aren't down eating, so they keep getting thinner. They, they won't venture out where the feed is, and, and so they're just not utilizing the, the area they have to, to feed in. In 2009, a heavy wolf predation year, Anderson participated in a wolf cattle interaction study by Oregon State University and the Agricultural Research Service. They tracked a radio collared wolf that was running in a pack of 12 animals and 10 radio collared cattle in a herd of 450. The study documented 783 encounters between that radio collared wolf and the radio collared cattle from June to November. A video of the GPS data shows how the radio collared wolf approaches the radio collared cattle and causes them to bunch up and scatter on multiple occasions. The wolf positions are shown as red dots and the cattle are shown as white and yellow dots. The cattle collars transmitted GPS position data every five minutes. The wolf collar transmitted GPS position data every 15 minutes. A wolf cattle encounter was defined as any time the collared wolf or cattle came within 500 yards of each other. Sometimes it was much closer than that. That year, the OX had 17 confirmed kills of mother cows, yearlings, and a bull. Plus, wolves injured several horses and killed an expensive border collie. By the end of the season, an additional 65 head of cattle were found dead or missing that couldn't be confirmed. 
All of those impacts cost money. You add all that up, say $80,000. Our cattle were coming off of the summer pasture at least 100 pounds lighter than normal. We had several hundred head out of a herd of a thousand that we were, had to put directly on hay. So there's another cost. Our conception rate went down to 80%. Lighter calves and lambs coming off the range, reduced conception rates, and cattle attacking herding dogs are three key issues that were not expected. Other unforeseen wolf impacts include stressed cattle bunching up together to protect themselves from wolf attacks, leading to less forage consumption and poor use of the range. In 2017, an Oregon State University study discovered that cattle spooked by wolves suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. This is the same psychological disorder that can affect American combat veterans. Ronaldo Cook, an Oregon State animal scientist, said, Wolf attacks create bad memories in the herd and cause a stress response known to result in decreased pregnancy rates, lighter calves, and a greater likelihood of getting sick. Wolves killing healthy mother cows and sometimes leaving them to rot. Wolves were thought to be likely to kill only the sick and the weak. Last year, wolves killed 45 mother cows. Large numbers of elk dropping into private ranch lands at different times of the year to avoid wolves. Elk apparently see the private pasture lands as safe zones. The pastures are a vital part of a rancher's cattle operation, important feed for cattle to eat in the fall. A greater percentage of mother cows and calves getting killed by wolves on public rangelands than expected. All of these impacts can raise costs for ranchers and potentially cause significant economic harm to Idaho ranch operations, affecting each ranch business and the state's rural economy. At last count, more than 435 ranchers in Idaho have been affected by wolves killing livestock and likely some of the unforeseen issues. While urban environmentalists wanted to bring wolves back to Idaho to restore a top predator in the food chain, as time marched on, wolf populations grew, causing the negative impacts of wolf recovery to fall on rural ranchers and the rural economy. Each item on the list can cut into a ranch business one by one, undermining revenues and people's livelihoods. It's like a death by a thousand cuts. Any one of these is pretty small. It's the cumulative effect that starts building up for a small business. A rancher is in the forage business. Uh, you don't think about it, but they're in the business of growing grass, either on their own home place or on the public lands that they have a grazing allotment for. And so uh, making sure that there's plenty of grass and that then it's converted into pounds of calves or lambs that uh, are sold and that's where they get their revenue. The story of wolf introductions to me is a, is a story of um, ranchers, you know, maybe reluctantly accepting the presence of wolves, but then seeing that presence grow and grow and cause these little tiny ripple effects that no one anticipated. Gardner points out that in rural Idaho counties, ranching is a significant contributor to the local economy. The large tracts of private land embodied in a working ranch provide key tax base for local government and public schools. And in many rural communities, they still can be the bedrock uh, of you know, a rural economy. Cattle ranching is big business in Idaho. Cash receipts from the beef cattle industry in Idaho average about $1.7 billion a year. Cattle industry is the second largest ag industry in the state. It's about 23% of our cash receipts that we get from cattle. If you look at these local communities, this ranching business is, is, is far more important to some of these and, and some of these uh, other regional economies. For example, in the Magic Valley, uh, one out of every other jobs is directly or indirectly created by agriculture, ag business. The cattle industry has some of the highest multipliers for in this. It's new dollars that come into your economy 
that create wealth. To help soften the blow from direct wolf kills, ranchers can apply to receive compensation for confirmed livestock losses from the Governor's Office of Species Conservation or the Farm Service Agency. But for most of the unforeseen economic impacts caused by wolves, ranchers have to absorb the costs. Let's take a look at them one by one. A Montana study in 2014 detailed the potential cost to ranchers whose livestock were attacked by wolves, leading to lighter calves coming off the range. In general, the weight of calves and lambs at shipping time determines the annual pay for ranchers. The Montana study found that on ranches where wolf predation had occurred, surviving calves lost an average of 22 pounds. Based on the sales of 250 light calves at a rate of $1.15 per pound, that adds up to a loss of $6,679, or seven times the typical reimbursement rate for a calf killed by a wolf, study authors said. The cattle sensing the presence of uh, an apex predator nearby is going to stress those cattle. If they're stressed and they're running, and they have adrenaline flowing, they're not putting on the pounds, and, and that's where a rancher makes his money. Sheep rancher Harry Solon estimates that wolves killed 100 head of his sheep in the summer of 2016. Lambs that came off the range were lighter than normal because of wolf predation and stress. In 2018, Solon lost 65 sheep to wolves right before shipping time. As many lambs as we're shipping, you know, well over 3,000 lambs and we probably are giving up a good five to 10 pounds. You know, if you call that 15,000 pounds, you know, that translates to 20 some thousand dollars that you've maybe just given up on weight loss. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty darn significant. I mean, every night they're on you. They're, if the sheep herder wasn't there, they, they'd kill them all. Wherever we go, there's wolves. Wolves follow the sheep from the Boise foothills all the way to Idaho City and Atlanta in the Boise National Forest, Schertz says. When the sheep are shipped to market in August, they're eight pounds below optimum weight, he says. Doing the math, that's 1,400 lambs per band of sheep coming off the range eight pounds light, resulting in a loss of 11,200 pounds, or a loss of $16,800 per band of sheep. That, that's a lot of money. Then if you got 10, 12, 14 bands, that, that figures up pretty fast. It's just killed us and it's putting, this, it's putting the sheep man out of business. The typical pregnancy rates for healthy mother cows is about 95% or better. If mother cows don't get pregnant after being stressed by wolves, that cow is considered to be a financial drain for the next year. But ranchers have at least a two-year investment into that cow to the point where it can give birth to a calf. Some ranchers might hang on to that cow for another year to see if it gets pregnant, and some might just sell it for salvage. Riggins rancher Doug Bogan said he's seen pregnancy rates for his mother cows drop below 90% because of wolves spooking his cattle. And last year was the worst year I, I've ever had as far as getting cows bred. And, uh, last year I was, I was over 10% open. I, usually if a cow does not breed back, she's down the road. Last year I felt I had no choice. It's the first time I've ever kept those cattle. Uh, trying to get them bred back and I think they're gonna breed back this year. The salvage value of a mother cow would typically run 40 cents per pound or four to five hundred dollars. But the bigger loss is the potential value of a mother cow raising calves for about 10 years. If the mother cow that doesn't get pregnant is two years old, the rancher has lost eight years of productivity, or eight calves at market value of $1,000 each, equals $8,000 in lost revenue. And then to replace the mother cow, it would cost another $1,000 to raise a heifer calf to the point where it could get pregnant and raise a calf.
Ledore rancher Chase Whitaker also has experienced this issue with his cattle. We run on this forest up here behind us uh, in an association and I don't even take a dog anymore because it, you know it's up and down hills and if you're trying to push these cows up a hill and all the cow wants to do is chase your dog down the hill now because that's what they've learned now. That's all the cows know is, I mean, it's a fight for life now when they see a canine. I mean, they want to kill that dog because they know what the wolves will do. So now it takes more of us to go push the cows on the forest. And that's if you can find any range riders to hire. It's a specialized skill set. Experienced range riders are hard to find and turnover can be high. On a cool morning in August, Cascade rancher Phil Davis was busy working cattle, sending a group of heifers to market. These are normally happy times for a rancher, a day when they get paid for a year's worth of work. But then a neighbor called Davis, saying a mother cow was down in a pasture nearby. Davis drove across pasture and found the cow dead by a fence. He looked for any external signs of trauma. Was it disease or predation? The only visible sign was some blood on the ground next to the cow's nose. Davis suspects that a wolf or several wolves killed the mother cow. He calls Wildlife Services and requests that their trappers come look at the animal. It was surprising to ranchers across Idaho that wolves might kill mother cows when preying on livestock. Last year, wolves killed 45 mother cows, including two on the Davis Ranch. People didn't believe that that was likely. Um, didn't want to believe it was wolves. Well, it certainly was. And you take this year, of our six depredations that we've had this year, three of them have been full-grown cows. It's been even more surprising that wolves may kill calves or mother cows and leave no outward sign of trauma. Trapper Greg Jones encourages ranchers to call Wildlife Services to double check. So many uh, cowboys, buckaroos, will see a dead cow, not a mark on her, because you wouldn't think an animal could kill uh, something this big um, without leaving outside marks. You know, that's what we're all used to. That's what, we're, that's what our brain is telling us. You have to skin them out. Every dead animal, if it's in wolf country, um, that animal needs to be skinned out. Wolves are a pursuit predator, meaning they like to chase animals on the run and isolate an animal to kill. Oftentimes, they will literally run down an animal to the point of exhaustion and death, Jones says. What if a mother cow gets killed by a wolf? What's the cost? Average market value of a mother cow equals $1,230. Value of an abandoned calf will be about 70% of the full market value, a 30% loss or about $300 per lost calf. Plus, if the wolf kills in August, that mother cow would be pregnant with next year's calf, a value of $1,000. So a wolf kill of a mother cow amounts to a triple whammy, the loss of that mother cow, the orphaned calf with diminished value, and the death of the fetus inside the dead mother cow. The wolves have changed the, the habits of the wildlife, elk and deer herds, and so they had moved down out of the hills, down onto their hay meadows, They're eating their hay crop and, and uh, fall feed, things like that. And that's, that's become a, a huge issue in the state. And love to see wildlife on our, on our property and creates an unfortunate situation for, for everyone involved, really, because you know, the, the landowner, that's vital to their livelihood. Uh, to have that feed for their cattle in the winter. And... Ranchers are seeing this occur in many areas. The economic cost depends on the size of the elk herd, how much forage they eat, and how long they stay in the pasture, eating valuable feed that's typically needed in the fall for livestock. 
ranchers' landowners can apply to recoup costs from the loss of pasture feed through Idaho Fish and Game. They must notify Fish and Game within 72 hours of a crop depredation issue, allow sport hunting on their property, and other items on a checklist. Ranchers who run livestock on public lands expect that they're going to lose some animals to predators. Pre-wolf, they lost about 1-2% to of their herd to predator issues. Post-wolf, that number has jumped to 4-5% to of the herd, or even higher depending on location and wolf predation. Indian Valley rancher Steve Sutton runs cattle on the west side of the Payette National Forest in the summer. He's been sustaining losses in the 5% range for several years in a row, during a time when wolves have been killing large numbers of livestock in the local area. We rarely have a confirmed or probably up here. We just simply don't find them. The bears find those carcasses within a day or two and then they just clean them up. Um, if we do find the hide and the bones, there's not enough there for wildlife services to determine what the cause of death was. A study by George and Gunson in Canada found that for every confirmed wolf kill found on public range, there could be another six wolf kills that are never found. Sustaining losses in the 4-5% to range is too high for a business where profit margins are measured in the 2% range, he says. Sutton could be representative of ranchers who run cattle on public lands where chronic wolf predation is an issue. But if you're in a place where maybe you're losing some 4 or 5 percent, all of a sudden that has huge impacts economically on that ranch. And we're going to have to take a really hard look at how we manage uh, predation and how we ensure the economic viability of ranches and how we're going to make that work. Let's do the math. For a herd of 100 cattle, 5% loss equals 5 calves with a marketable value of about $1,000 per calf of $5,000 total. Let's recap the costs of unforeseen impacts caused by wolves. For sheep, lambs coming off the range an average of 8 pounds lighter than normal or net loss of $16,800 per band of sheep. For cattle, 250 cattle coming off the range an average of 22 pounds light or net loss of $6,680. Mother cows that don't get pregnant, potential combined loss of $9,000. Stressed cattle attacking herding dogs means hiring three range riders at $120 a day or $360 a day. Loss of pregnant mother cow with orphaned calf $2,530. Cost of higher predator losses on public lands, $1,000 per lost calf and $1,200 of lost mother cow, total cost unknown. $5,000 or more total cost per rancher. Total cost of unforeseen impacts, $25,000 and counting per affected rancher. Worst case scenario, Ranchers worry that the cumulative impact of the unforeseen issues could force a number of family-owned ranchers out of the business in Idaho. That would potentially lead to the conversion of those ranches to subdivisions or small ranchettes, loss of open space, and crucial fish and wildlife habitat. It could also lead to out-of-state people buying up those ranches and closing off public access. Idaho already is seeing new conflicts with out-of-state interests buying up large tracts of private land and posted it no trespassing. They want, it, they want a private enclave where they don't have to deal with the public at all. Those of us who have been here for a long time uh, accept the fact that people like to hunt, probably not on our ground, but they go through and have access to lots of federal land. And if, if, if we go under, the next buyer is not going to want to, want to share that. You could have uh, parking lots and, and Walmarts and all kinds of things out there that people uh, aren't going to really appreciate. Idaho's rural communities and landscapes are something that urban people value and enjoy on their way to playing in the mountains. 
I do not believe that we can maintain the health of our urban populations in the absence of healthy rural communities. The landmass that they occupy is some of the most critical habitat for our wildlife, for our fish, uh, you know, for our avian populations. When we look at what is driving Idaho's economy forward, what's attracting new businesses to Idaho and new talent, uh, it's being able to access our great uh, outdoors in Idaho. All those urban areas are close to our great outdoors. In just minutes, you can be outdoors. You can enjoy the diversity that exists. But much of that diversity is dependent upon our private lands and the health of our rural communities. Now, when you go outside and you want to be in outdoors, open space, you know, and clean water and uh, just the opportunity to discover and see wildlife. I, I mean, that's part of what makes the experience. Whether you're rafting or whether you're hunting, whether you're fishing, uh, whether you're just out hiking or looking for those places of solitude. Seeing a, a rancher or a group uh, moving cattle across the landscape, there's something iconic and something that connects us to the present and back to the past.